Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Hayek Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of kings and Lord of lords. And the Holy Bible, praise God, is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say with hearts of joy and hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, friends, what a delight to be in the Word of God this morning. I trust that you are feeling blessed in Jesus. I trust that the Spirit is flowing through your soul like rivers of living water, and you are drinking from those waters and feeling the refreshment that only comes from the hand of the Almighty who loves us so dearly. Well, today is November the 28th in the year of our Lord, 2017, and friends, this is one a day for the soul. Now, we're continuing our study in the book of Hebrews this morning, and we are going to begin in verse 4, which is a delightful passage of Scripture. But before we read that, let's look at what I would consider our text to be this morning, and that would be Psalm chapter 94 and verse 12. Blessed, blessed friends, happy is the man whom the Lord chastenest and whom the Lord teaches out of thy law. Blessed is the man whom thou chastenest. Now in verse 11 of Hebrews chapter 12, no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but instead grievous. So how is the man blessed if what he is experiencing is so grievous? Because after the chastening, it will yield the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Now, it's an odd thing because, friends, I look at my life, and I know that you might look at yours at this moment, and I can remember great days of suffering, pain, and agony, confusion, despair, and feeling absolutely alone. And yet, when I look back on those moments of chastening from the Lord, I can see how they have helped shape me and form me into the man that I am today. And so my heart is filled with praise unto the great God because I know that these acts of discipline has served to produce in me a loyalty, an allegiance, a love, and a surrender that without those disciplines, I never would have known. And so with that being said, let's just take a look at what the passage tells us. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 4. Ye have not resisted unto blood, striving against sin. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaks unto you as children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord. Why? Because back to Psalm chapter 94. Blessed is the man whom the Lord chastens. So verse 5 in Hebrews 12 says, Despise not the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. Now chastening comes in many forms. It can come in a simple reminder from the word of God as we read and study the word of God. And it is in those moments that we are to bow our heads and surrender, confess in shame, and receive the forgiveness of the Lord who cares for us enough to remember them no more and motivates us and encourages us to get up and continue in our journey, striving to never commit whatever act of disobedience it was that he has chastened us for. Now, it would be nice if we learned by a simple reminder from the word of the Lord, but for many of us as rebellious children, we don't learn our lesson there. So maybe the chastening comes from a rebuke or a word of reproof for someone that we know. As we know from Matthew chapter 18, when they rebuke us, when they reprove us, if we confess our sins, if we repent from our sins, we're forgiven and welcomed back into the family. But if we don't, then we're considered an unbeliever because of our lack of repentance. But as I stated, many of us are rebellious children, and so the hand of chastening from the Lord comes in other various manners, maybe a sickness, maybe a loss in our life, some material possession, or maybe our jobs.
Maybe it's something that happens to someone else, someone we love, someone we care about that shakes us and rattles us back to a place of recognition. Maybe it's a disaster or some other supernatural act of God. It could be something as simple as a dream or something as large as political oppression or political persecution. There are many ways that the Lord chastens us, but blessed is the man whom the Lord loves enough to chasten. Now, while this chastening is taking place in our lives, we are to endure in verse 7, because God is dealing with us as his sons. But in verse 8, if we are without chastisement, if there is no chastening from the Lord in our acts of rebellion and disobedience, then we are no longer sons, but we are bastards. Now that word in the Greek simply means we are illegitimate. We may consider ourselves the children of God, but he doesn't know us. And so because we understand that the Lord only chastens those whom he loves, his children, blessed is the man who receives the chastening from the Lord. And none of us are without sin. All of us make mistakes. And sometimes we need the hand of the Lord in our lives to set us right, to set us straight. In verse 9, he reminds us that our physical fathers discipline us, so why shouldn't our spiritual father? For we've had fathers of our flesh which did correct us. And because of the correction that came, we showed them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the father of spirits? For our earthly fathers for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure. But God, for our profit, our benefit, has chastened us that we might be partakers of his holiness. There is a purpose to our suffering. Because without suffering, which brings brokenness, we're, we're of no use to God. Now he says in verse 11, of course, no chastening for the present seems to be joyous but instead grievous. Nevertheless, afterwards, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness, of godliness, of holiness. Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees. Rejoice in your God who is chastening you and make straight paths for your feet. The reason you've been chastened is because you've gotten off of the straight and narrow. So return to the straight and narrow, make straight paths for your feet, and be healed. Now, if you're like me, you can look back on your days of chastening, and maybe you see yourself, maybe you remember yourself being drowned in self-pity. And there's nothing that we can do to go back and change those moments. We can only learn from them, and we can prepare ourselves for the days ahead when again chastening comes from the Lord, and we can remember to rejoice in those moments rather than be drowned in self-pity because we know that the Lord is at work producing in us something greater than we were even before. Because each and every time we're chastened, we're a little bit better than we were before the chastening began. And when you add up all those times of chastening, we are being developed and trained into good and faithful followers of the Lord Jesus. A child doesn't learn all of life's lessons from a simple act of discipline. There are many forms of discipline that come throughout the years of that child growing up, and so it is with you and I, friends, in the spiritual life. But if you were to see that child after years of acts of discipline, maybe at the age of 18 or 19, they look nothing like the child of three or four when the discipline began. And so it is with us. When we began our journey with the Lord, what a mess we were. But after many forms and acts of discipline that come from the loving hand of our spiritual father, when you look upon us today, we resemble nothing of that creature that began that journey oh so long ago. And that's the purpose for the discipline, friends. It's like the rough-cut, rebellious teenager that enters into boot camp and yet eight weeks later walks out a respectable young man, an absolute new creation because of the discipline that he has received throughout those eight weeks. May we too, friends, enter into the boot camp of the Lord Jesus 
and allow him to do his work in us, whipping us and shaping us so that we can be usable instruments of service in his kingdom. Well, I love you, friends. I'm so grateful that you're again with us this morning. I pray that the word of the Almighty God is doing its work within you and that you can sense the invisible hand of God alive and at work in your life, surgically removing all the cancerous things that are causing such great damage to your soul and mending you and healing you and creating within you a vessel that shines forth with the glory, the praise, and the adoration of our great and mighty God whom we serve. Now, as he wills, and until tomorrow, friends, I truly love you, and I'll see you on the next video.